Aloha. Welcome back. Today we have a beautiful guest on our show and his name is Kumu. This is a Kumu, a beautiful pink goat fish. See its whiskers? And I was lucky enough to get this fish on a dive with my friend Nick. This dive is a grocery run and our goal is to be fast because Nick's wife Allie is watching Buddy for us. Thanks Allie. And on Nick's very first dive, he's still dropping down as he sees a nice school of kala approaching. He takes a shot and hits a good one. I'm spotting Nick from the surface and I notice that as he comes up, he's pointing at something. Thinking that he might need a backup shot, I take a dive down to meet him and get a closer look. But I see that his fish is secure, and it turns out that what Nick's really trying to tell me is that he sees a big kumu down there. And this is the beauty of diving with a partner. It's for safety first and foremost, but it also allows you to communicate and hunt more efficiently as a pack. Nick got a nice kala on his first drop, and now it's my turn. Justin is following me down with his camera. And we're moving slow because we know that our goal is to go all the way down, past the reef, and to the sand on the bottom, which is in about 70 feet of water. I find a nice place in the shadows to settle in and lay down, and I see the kumu way off in the distance. I fluff a little sand to bring the kumu in closer. It gives me a beautiful broadside shot, but right when I pull my trigger, I realize that my safety's on. A mistake that messes with my mind and my plan. But I turn it off and wait again. And lucky enough, I'm not only able to get this kumu, but apparently I also get a bonus fish, a nai nai, a good fry fish. But the two fish together get tangled on the bottom, and I know that I need air. So I turn my reel to free spool, and I head to the surface so I can breathe, knowing that I can try to untangle these fish later. From the surface, I'm able to get them free and pull them up. And with these two dives alone, Nick and I have enough food for dinner, so we're heading home. Justin and I are flying to Maui, so I'm excited to bring this kumu home to my mom and cook this fish for her. And so that's where we're at. And, and now we have this beautiful fish. And first thing first, I'm gonna go outside and clean it. What we're gonna make today is called steamed kumu. It's a classic for goat fish, but can be used in, for many other fish. It's just really good for any nice, moist, delicious fish that you wanna eat whole. But first thing first with the whole fish, get these scales off, get the guts out, and then we'll get cooking. Hi, buddy boy. Hi. Hanging out with grandma, grandpa, and auntie. I have to go scale it now. I'm going to borrow your scaler. Okay. The scaler looks old. That's my scaler. <laughs> well, it's originally mine, but yes, it is old. My dad isn't that into steamed goat fish, which is crazy. Like, he has bad taste in a lot of ways, except women. He's got good taste in you, Mom. Oh, I'm the best. Yes, you are. But my mom has great taste, and she loves kumu. Mom, what's the best way to make a kumu? I like it steamed. Good, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, this fish is now cleaned and ready to steam. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna score it. I'm gonna cut, or I'm gonna cut slices in it. So, and instead of just going straight down like this, which a lot of people do, I like to go at an angle. See that? Cause you get 
more surface area of meat that we can season that way. So I'm gonna cut these slits and then when you, it makes it easier to serve, I feel. This is now a scored fish, all sliced up, ready to steam. And so if you have a fish steamer that will fit this whole fish, you can just place it in just like this, but I feel like most of us don't. So I'm gonna show you what we can do to solve that problem. We can cut it in half. So I'm gonna just go down to where the bone is, take my knife, take my palm of my hand, turn it around, do the same thing to this side. Now we have a fish chopped in half. And you might think, oh, you just ruined the whole presentation because when you serve steamed fish whole, you want it whole and beautiful. All you have to do is put it back together on the plate when you serve it, you'll see. Now I'm gonna season this fish. So I go very simple. Basically, I'm going to use ginger. And then this is a bonus ingredient. This is called chun choy. It's a dried salted turnip that you can find in your ethnic aisle of grocery stores. When it comes to ginger, I always peel it with a spoon. And now I'm just going to mince it up. You're just gonna drop them again. How about I get you something to eat like a banana? Can you say banana? That's not a banana. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be funny. Is that funny, buddy? It's an apple banana. Apple banana. Wow. Grandma's favorite. <laughs> when I was still pregnant with Buddy, I did this like online cooking course with the inertia and I go over a lot of these techniques in details from cleaning fish to sustainability to just philosophy of eating and foraging. And so I can put a link to that if anyone is interested in a more in-depth instructional cooking course. But steamed fish is one of the things I cover. So this is chun choy. If you mince it up, and kind of sprinkle it on your fish when you steam it. It's a really nice touch. Okay, so now we're gonna just use the ginger and the chun choy, and we're gonna just really put it in your fish. I mean, honestly, even if you just steam your fish with absolutely nothing on it, it's the steps that follow that are like the mandatory ones. The ingredients that go on after you steam it that I feel you have to do for steamed fish, but this is all like bonus stuff. So I'm just gonna show a way to steam fish where if you don't have a steamer, you don't have a fire, you don't have a microwave, but you do have a stove top, what you can do. Take a plate or a bowl, something that can hold your fish and place it inside. And this plate or a bowl that's gonna hold your fish needs to just fit inside a larger pot that can hold water. So I'm gonna put some water in here. That looks, that looks good. It might, it might get a little in there when it starts bubbling, but not too much. Turn on your heat. Most important part, you're gonna cover it. Steaming is a very hot, moist way of cooking something. It keeps all the moisture in. We don't wanna boil our fish, we don't wanna blanch it, we don't wanna submerge it in water, but we want the steam to be the moisture that cooks it. And so you can already see some condensation happening to this lid. The steaming process has begun already, but eventually this water's gonna boil and that's when our fish is gonna start cooking. This is called choy sum. While the fish steams, I always like to saute up some delicious greens. Doesn't matter if it's choy sum, bok choy, mustard greens, kale, whatever, collard greens. Just something nice, dark, and leafy to be a nice bed for that steamed fish. So I'm just gonna remove the stems and start chopping it. I like big cuts for my greens. In Hawaii, we often steam goat fish. We also sometimes steam, you know, snappers and whatnot. But depending on where you live, there's a whole bunch of fish that are gonna just take perfectly to this cooking technique. As long as it's a fish 
with an appropriate size where you're gonna cook it whole. As long as it's a fish where it has rather moist meat that you wanna just keep that way and that you like that flavor, it's good. It's good to use this technique. Okay, so for these greens, I'm just gonna saute them in some butter. Usually I would do butter, garlic, and shoyu. Butter, garlic, soy sauce. However, I'm at my parents' house and I just realized they don't even have garlic. Your dad does shopping. Oh, it's all. Oh, I will. Dad. No garlic. Ugh. We let this stay closed to capture the heat, but I just wanna show you. The water is boiling. The steam is coming up. You can see that the skin is starting to get more white, more opaque. And um, that fish is gonna cook just from the steam itself. So I like to start with some butter. And I always throw in the thick stems first, just because they need a little more cooking time than the leafy greens. Oh my god. I finally found the lid that actually fits this pot, which will allow it to steam better because it'll create a real seal. But you can see that it is steaming up perfectly. Look at that. Maybe I don't even explain and bother then. See that look at that beautiful cheek meat. Yeah, it's getting there. These greens cook down so much, they always do. And once they wilt like this, this is when you wanna throw in here minced garlic, if you have it. It really looks like it's almost there. So I'm gonna turn off the heat, but keep the lid on and let it just carry over cook. With these greens, I'm gonna add some shoyu while the pan's still hot. I'm just gonna crack, just slightly crack this lid so that I can pour it with control. <laughs> Kind of dangerous if that lid pops off, you're, you're screwed. All right, and I can smell that. I'm gonna turn off those greens. And now we're gonna get to the finishing touch. Chopping cilantro, heating up some peanut oil. Peanut oil, I feel, is pretty essential to the steamed fish because peanut oil, it doesn't just have a good flavor and texture in your mouth, but it has a super high smoking point, which is really important because you want to get this peanut oil smoking, smoking, smoking hot, so hot that it's going to do the magic trick at the end. I'll show you. So the final step is always chopping some fresh cilantro and green onions. I only got cilantro because Mom, who can I blame for there being no green onions growing here anymore? You're dead. <laughs> well, I guess we're not having green onions in this fish, but that's okay, because honestly, I think more important is the cilantro. Cilantro just has such a nice, beautiful, strong flavor. I used to hate it as a kid. If anybody put cilantro on anything, I felt like they just ruined it. And now, lo and behold, I'd have to say it's my favorite fresh herb. So I like to just use a big pan to cook my greens, and I use that pan for the presentation. Kind of fluff up these greens, move them to the outside. The fish is gonna go in the middle. They're already seasoned with shoyu, and they're gonna taste delicious. So now I'm gonna get my fish. All right, okay, so here's the kind of tricky part. Cause steamed fish is so soft, oftentimes it's gonna just fall apart when you grab it, it's okay. Just put it back together. But I'm gonna try to get this all in one piece. And I'm just gonna put it back together like a beautiful, beautiful puzzle. Okay, now the tail part. Woohoo! That worked out nicely, right? Can't even tell we cut that fish in half. Look at that. Look at that beautiful fish. Just take a moment to admire that. And so now the next step is I'm going to add shoyu all across this fish. I like to do that next so that I know that this beautiful, white, delicate meat all gets touched with some soy sauce. And I go extra generous because I want it to kind of bleed into the other side of the fish. Okay, now we go for the fresh herbs, the fresh green onions and cilantro. In this case today, only cilantro, and just let them fall right over 
that beautiful seasoned steamed fish. Pile it high. If you got them, just use them. Now look at our peanut oil. It is smoking like crazy. So please, please, please be very careful. You don't want any liquid around this because it will splatter and it could really, really, really hurt you. So be very, very, very careful with this part, but you want it hot because then you're gonna hold it very close to the fish so it doesn't splatter you. Hold it away from yourself and you're gonna pour, hitting the fish, hitting those herbs. Wow. I wish you could smell it in here. The way that that peanut oil hit all of those herbs, it just infuses all of that flavor straight down, infuses the cilantro, the ginger, anything you put on that fish, it just wilts it, melts it, takes it down into the meat. But what it also does is it then mixes with this beautiful sauce of of show you of the fish juice itself and it adds this beautiful sheen to it, this buttery texture that when it hits your tongue, it's gonna make a big difference, a really big difference. So now everything is just hit with that peanut oil and this fish is ready to serve. So let's eat. Look who it is. Buddy. What you doing, buddy? Painting his mouth. Buddy's first Thanksgiving. Buddy made this? Oh, that's his Buddy hand made this. Print. Yeah, it's his hand print. Oh. Yeah, and he drew the legs, and he did the eyes, and the little gobble gobble lines. part. All lines. The hand part is true, though. Buddy, you painted us a picture? What do you think? Uh, it's very beautiful. I wish I liked steamed fish, but... It's not steaky enough for him. This is moist and delicate and soft, and that's the beauty of it. But you kind of need to, yeah, have some taste, I think, to appreciate it. Just saying. He's crazy. All right. Okie dokie, but I know who will appreciate it. Yes. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> so I just will remove itself right from the bone. Just cook good. And you can kind of just like, Toss it in the sauce. Okay. Here you go, Kamahele. Mmm, yum. The sauce is so good on the rice, too. <laughs> Buddy, wanna trade your paintbrush for some fish? Just rush in, Mom. He'll make room. <laughs> <laughs> We're not duly. Go. Just go for it, right to the room. <laughs> nice. Good job. Good teamwork. Mom, how do you like the fish? I don't know. Buddy loves it. You're just feeding it all to Buddy. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Good. Yay. <laughs> it's a huge bite. <laughs> it's a huge bite. I like it. I can do it. It's not too big of a bite. She's got a big mouth. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Sorry. Mmm. It was the Ready, honey? Yep. Here you go. Mmm. Mm. Wow. So good. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed that episode. Mm. And in that dive scene when I shot that kumu, I was covered head to toe in Rife International spearfishing gear. Everything from my fins to my wetsuits to oh, my snorkel <laughs> <laughs> and my mask. What's that? It's a mask. And the great people at Rife International would love to give this setup a beautiful necton mask and stable snorkel to you. And for this contest, or giveaway I should say, it doesn't matter 
where you are in the world. They will ship it anywhere. So all you have to do to be eligible to win is subscribe and leave a comment below and we'll choose a winner by next week. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you then.